Hey there and welcome back. This is an ultimate guide to markers for artists. What I'm going to show you today is the wide variety of markers that are out there, whether they're light fast or not, different ways you can use them in your art, and I'm even including some budget options. My goal is to let you see what's out there and give you an idea of what might work for you. I tend to change it up from time to time, so I don't always use the exact same markers or marker types. I like a lot of variety in my art practice, so it's just gonna depend on what works for you. For almost all of these, except for the two budget options, you can buy just one marker at a time, and that is what I would suggest you do, is maybe get a couple of the different things you'd like to try, see what works for you, see whether you like them, and go from there. If you like to go big or go home and buy full sets, that's totally fine. I tend to do that sometimes. But if you are more budget conscious and you just wanna try a couple things here or there, just know that you don't have to buy huge sets of these markers in order to try them and see what you like. With all that said, let's take a look at the first ones. What I have in here are watercolor markers, and I have two different brands. So I'm gonna go ahead and just dump these out. This brand is Faber-Castell. They have two tips on them. So there's more of a brush tip and more of a fine liner type tip. These are Winsor Newton, um, very similar. So these have a fine tip, and on the other end is a brush tip. All of these markers are light fast. So if that is something that is important to you, just be aware of that. Light fastness for me doesn't really matter so much. The biggest thing to be conscious of with markers or paints or any art supplies is fluorescence. Fluorescence are very fugitive, they will fade. Um, over time, most other colors are at least pretty okay, and especially if you're working in an art journal or a sketchbook, it's not being exposed to light very much anyway. So let's take a look at what these can do. This is a nice bright color, so we'll go ahead and use this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make a scribble. And you can see how vibrant this is. It's sinking into the paper a little bit, but these are artist quality markers, so they're gonna be a little bit more expensive. They're highly pigmented, and that's something to know about these, and you're gonna find that's true with most artist quality materials. What makes them artist quality is largely the pigment load in that there's usually about twice as much pigment in artist level markers versus student level. Make some thin lines. Now over here with the Windsor Newton. So the thing to know about watercolor markers is they will stay water soluble. If you need a marker that's not going to move after you put it down, if you're going to be using like other wet media, these might not be for you. Because if you're going to spray your sketchbook or your painting or something with water, these are going to lift, they're going to move just like watercolors do. I personally like that and I, I enjoy that. So let's take a look. And these will always lift. This isn't just when they're a little bit wet. They're always gonna move even after they dry if water is added to them. I'm 
And you can see how vibrant these are too. These are lovely markers. So this is what it looks like. This is just a piece of cardstock, but I wanna show you because I have a watercolor canvas. This is actually an inexpensive one from Michaels when they had them. I don't know if they started making them again, but there's other brands you can find that do make them like Fabriano, I think has a watercolor canvas. And these are fun and what it is, it's just a really fine, almost cottony canvas that's very absorbent. So let me just show you what these look like on here because you're not limited to your sketchbooks with these. You could do paintings with them. You could use these on watercolor paper. So maybe we'll do that next too. I'll pull out some watercolor paper so you can see. But you can see how much these lift on the canvas versus the paper. And let's try another one. And you can use these to mix colors. So you can come in here with these in another area and mix it to get a different color and get some neutrals that way. All right, let's try these on a piece of watercolor paper. Here is a watercolor sketchbook. So we'll see. So one thing I'm noting, let's see if it does the same as with this. Um, I can feel the paper pulling um, the ink almost out of the marker. This one, it doesn't do it as much. One thing I've noticed, the difference between these Faber-Castells and these Winsor Newtons is these go down a little smoother. And I don't know if it's the marker tip or the way the watercolor ink flows out of these, um, but I do have a preference for these. So that's just something to know. I do like the Faber-Castells better than the Winsor Newtons. Winsor Newtons are still great. And I like the color range better for my personal preferences in the Faber-Castell. It might be worth getting a couple of each to see what you prefer though. So let's go ahead and add some water to these. So when using these on a canvas or watercolor paper, these behave more like watercolor in that they lift more fully. This is more like what sketchbook paper is. And when you make marks, it's still gonna lift, but it's probably not gonna lift all the way up. So that's just something to know. And then we can mix them. So these can be a great way to get down a ground really quickly for a background and have some transparency in your sketchbook. I'm really enjoying these two colors together. I like this and it's funny, I've had this sketchbook lying around for years and never had any interest in using it um, after I bought it. But now that I'm using these markers in here, I can see what I would use this for. Because so many of us use these types of sketchbooks, this is a Royal Talons art creation sketchbook. I just want to do a little bit in here to see how the lifting is. Like, are they going to lift all the way up or are they going to leave marks behind like on here? So these are gonna leave a little bit of a mark behind like here. Um, and also you don't wanna scrub at this kind of paper too much. It'll 
start lifting little bits of the paper. So if you want to really work with these and smush them around and stuff, you're probably gonna need mixed media paper or watercolor paper for that in terms of sketchbook painting. And last but not least, let's try this in a Dilusions. Um, I really enjoy these sketchbooks too. This is mixed media paper. It's much heavier than the Art Creation sketchbook. I love that green. I love when you can buy neutrals um, in markers and pencils and things like that. So these will lift a little more, I think, than the art creations. You can also scrub at this kind of paper a little bit more than the art cre creations. So if that's something you really want to work heavily with is the watercolor and the watercolor markers, I would probably stick with the heavier paper um, over the art creations, unless you're okay just putting a quick layer down and not working it too much. But these come out really nicely on here too. Next up we have acrylic markers and I'm gonna show you a few different brands. They are a little bit different from each other. The great thing about these is they're all gonna be light fast. They are permanent once they dry. They all have a really great pigment load to them which bumps them up into more artist quality markers. And with the variety of tips on them, they're actually just a joy to use. So let's take a look. I'm going to go ahead and start pulling some of these out so you can see the variety of sizes and brands that I have in here. I have, I believe, three different brands. So these are the three different brands. These are Posca's, this is Liquitex, and these are Molotow, um, one for all markers. And again, these are all light fast, so you can use these um, in your sketchbooks, in your art journals, in paintings. There's a zillion different ways to use them. They all have a variety of tips on them, and they come in a variety of sizes, which just makes them super fun. The other great thing is all of these brands come in a wide range of colors, so you can get very vibrant colors, or you can get more neutralized colors, as you can see that most of these are. So let me go ahead and start showing them to you. This is a Molotow marker, and this is one of the big ones. I believe it's 15 millimeters, and it has a very wide tip on it. This makes it great for getting in large amounts of color if you have a big area that you want to add color to. If you do want to move it, you can get your finger in there while it's still wet and smudge it. You can also use it to get a bunch of paint down in one spot and come through with a wet brush and move that paint around. But once it's dry, it is dry. And the Molotows have a matte finish to them so they won't dry shiny and they won't make your pages stick together if you're using them in a sketchbook or an art journal. And these smaller ones, this is a four millimeter, comes with a smaller tip that's rounded. You can still get quite a bit, quite a thin line with these if you use like a corner. They're not super thick. You can use them in the same way. It's a little bit easier with these though, because you can get more paint down. But if they haven't dried yet, you can go ahead and wet them and move some of that around and it'll leave some of the mark making behind there, which can be really fun too. So those two are the Molotows. I'm going to show you the Liquitex next. The tip is very similar, if not identical, to the Molotow. This is also a, should be a 15 millimeter marker. 
So these are the big guys and I really, let's get the paint to come down. There we go. I really like these bigger ones for getting a wide amount of color down very quickly. One thing to know about the Liquitex is that it is going to dry shiny. Um, it's not super shiny, but it does kind of have like a satin finish to it. If you have like a layer that you just put down and don't really do anything with, if you wet it and push it into the paper, it'll dry more matte. But if it sits on top of the paper like this, um, it's going to dry with a little bit of a sheen to it. So if that's something that's going to bother you, that's just something to note that these ones might not be for you. These other two will dry matte. Um, but I do like some of the colors that Liquitex comes in that I can't get in the two other brands. So I have a couple of those. And these ones are Posca's. And again, these come in a variety of tips. This one, I believe, I'm not sure if either of the other two come in a chisel tip at all. It might only be Posca's, but Posca's have um, these little guys, the 8Ks, they're 8 millimeters. They have a chisel tip on them. So it's a nice balance between the huge one and the little skinny one. And these are really nice. This one's slate gray. And still move it a little bit. So I'm noticing on this paper versus some of the other ones, the paint um, sinks into this paper very quickly, but we're gonna try it on some other surfaces to see what they do. This is a 3M. Um, this has a series of numbers on it, so I don't know if this is like a three millimeter or whatever, but it's one of the 3M ones. And it's a really fine tip and good for some detail. And this is another one of these big guys. This one is 15 millimeters, just like these other two. And the tip is virtually identical and they dry matte. And these are really pigmented. Out of these three different brands, I would say the Posca's and the Liquitex are more opaque than the Molotow's, at least the ones I have. The Molotow's are still, you know, really great for opacity, but they're just not quite as opaque as the others. At least I've noticed these tend to be a little bit more liquidy, I think is the reason than these other ones. Let's go to the back of here and let's look at some of these on the Art Creations paper. So again, this is a Posca. And this lifts really nicely on here. You're still going to have that mark where you had it. So there's going to be like a ghost of it. But I know most of us like to do some mark making anyway, so that's okay. But this lifts and moves around quite a bit more so than this paper. Let's do one more. You can also smush it around, move it a little bit. So those work in there. Like I said, the Art Creation sketchbook isn't really great. It's not really designed for it. It's not even so much that it's not great for it. It really isn't designed to take a ton of water. For a sketchbook with thinner pages though, I would say 
these work great with water soluble materials more so than some of the other sketchbooks that I've used. So it's just something to be aware of. If the paper lifting a little bit and pilling is going to bother you when you're moving things around, you just want something with more like mixed media paper in it. And then let's take a look at how they behave in here. So again, this is the Dilusions art journal. It's got mixed media paper. And they will lift a lot more in here than the other two. But that's to be expected too. You can see a little bit of the mark making, but it's lifted more so than it did in the art creations. Poscas are the best at lifting. So if you want to be able to lift and really move some of that paint around, I think the Poscas are going to be your best bet for that. And it would make sense because the Molotow markers tend to be a little bit more watery, which means they're going to sink into the paper faster, right? And so you're not going to have as much of a chance to lift. And these Liquitex seem to have really gone on to the paper very fast and are not quite as liftable. So again, that's just something to be aware of. If you really want to be able to lift your markers and you want some opacity, um, Poscas, I think, are the best option here. But like I said, they all kind of have their uses and some colors come in some brands and not others. So I think, you know, I have a variety. I think most people have a variety of these, but those are just some things to note. Lastly, the other types of things you can use these markers on is your actual painting. So if you're painting on canvas or a panel, you can use these on here. They're not just limited to sketchbooks. If you want to be able to do some big gestural mark making, you're gonna be able to do that with these. And since this is canvas and already has some paint on it, these are gonna sit on the surface more of the canvas than they do on paper. So if you really wanna be able to work with the paint and move it around after it's on there, you can go ahead and do that. So let's try, let's try this yellow color. So you can almost see this Molotow, it's just not as opaque as the Posca's. Doesn't mean that it's bad. I can use it to go over an area and not cover everything up, but let's see, I bet you this goes down more opaque, yeah. You can blend them while they're still wet. And these ones are good. These are the Posca Ivories. These ones aren't very opaque, but that's okay. What I find they're really good for is knocking things back. So if you need to unify an area or harmonize it, just get rid of some of that contrast to knock it back. You can use that. So these are really fun for actually working on paintings with.
So those were all fancier artist quality markers, but what I wanna show you now is a budget option. These ones are made by Arteza, and they have a tip with two ends. You can choose which one you'd like to use when you're setting up your marker. These are only sold in sets, so that's something to note. But if you're just getting into acrylic markers or markers in general for working in your sketchbook and your art journal and things like that, these could be a really great option. So I have the whole set of these, but I just pulled out some of the colors so that I can show you. And I'm just gonna do some lines on here so I can kind of give you a sense of the opacity or the lack thereof. That doesn't make these bad. These are still a really great budget option, but they're not gonna be as opaque as a Posca. The benefit of these is you can save a little bit of money and have a huge variety of colors to try to get a sense of what you like. And these are good if you do want some transparency instead. So these I have mine set up already with a rounded end. There is another tip on the other side. Let me see if I can find some more. And no, so there are two ways to put this tip in. Oh, I can pull it out. So it has a pointy end on the other side, so you can pick what you'd prefer. I like a chunkier look to my line, so I have them there. I suppose you could even switch back and forth um, if you don't mind painty hands. So these are the same as the other kind in that they have a the little ball in them to mix up the ink, and you push on them to get the ink to come down or the paint. These are considered acrylic markers, um, but they're just not, I mean, you can kind of see the difference right there. Like if I come over that with a Posca, you can see right there how much more the Posca covers. Let me see if I can get my gray one. Like the, some of these Poscas are just super opaque and the chisel tips, again, they lay down more paint, I think, at a time than um, the small ones. But you can see that it's got like a milky quality, almost like gouache. So some of the Poscas, again, are gonna be more like super opaque, like this slate gray. Some are gonna be a little bit more like gouache, but these Arteza markers go down more like watercolor markers. They do, I think, sit on the surface a little bit longer. So you can still use them in a water soluble way and move that pigment around but once they are dry, they're pretty much dry and they're not gonna move. What else do we have here? Let's try, let's try this. And again, these are really good if you wanna get this thinner line work in there and you just want to get a little bit of paint down in an area. What's going to be tricky is if you want a lot of paint down in an area, it's just not going to do that as well as the more artist quality acrylic markers simply because you can get them in a bigger size to just get more down at once and get to it again while it's still wet if you need to. So we're gonna go ahead and try them on our different surfaces again. This is the art creation sketchbook. So let's try this on here. And those actually do move pretty well. And I like, I like the balance between the mark this leaves behind and how it moves. So. Just because something's a more budget brand doesn't mean that it's bad necessarily. It's just, 
another tool in the toolbox and there's different ways to use that tool and you'll get different effects from that tool as well. So these are very vibrant. You will get some decent pigment and color out of these. They're just not as good for covering um, a wide area or for having opacity to them. Most acrylic markers have some opacity to them. These pretty universally just don't. They're a little bit more like a regular marker. And let's give them a quick go on here. There are some really nice colors in this set. There's a wide variety. Some of them are a little more neutralized than others. And these lift pretty well on the Dilusions Art Journal. So again, if you want a good amount of lifting, this should be the go-to um, out of all the different ones. So these are Tombows. I believe some of these might be light fast, but they're not universally light fast. Um, and that's just something to be aware of if that's going to bother you. I'm generally not concerned with light fastness. Um, as long as you're not sticking your art in a direct beam of sun um, for long periods of the day, really it should be fine. Um, so Tombos, you can buy them individually in some art stores. You can buy them in small sets. You can buy a huge, big, full set of them like I had come in here. These ones are just the colors that I like that I had pulled out and put in a case for um, traveling and doing plein air stuff. And the great thing about the Tombos is because they come in such a wide variety of colors is that they have saturated colors, but they've also got a lot of neutrals in there. And again, that's really great if you want convenience colors, um, like especially if you're doing landscapes and natural things. Generally speaking, a lot of these markers, except for like the watercolor markers, don't necessarily blend into a brand new color very well. So you want something that's got some convenience colors in them that are colors that you need to make the work that you want to make. So let's take a look at these. And just with just as with the watercolor markers, these have two tips on them. Um, they have a brush tip and they have a really fine liner on them, like that's super, super skinny. So if you wanted to make hatch marks or get super detailed with things, you can use that. I pretty much never use that end of a marker. I like chunky, messy lines. So I stick with this one and use it as like a little brush. If you want the pigment to move and you get it while it's still wet, you can activate it, similar with the other markers. If you don't get it while it's still wet though, it will dry and pretty much that's that, whatever, wherever it is, it is. These don't have opacity to them. They're more like regular markers. can go over them and get different colors and neutralize things that are underneath. So there is still a lot of room to play with these, even though these aren't like quote unquote watercolor markers. Let's see, what can we blend into? Um, we'll do this one. And so you can layer these too, like that, and come up with new colors. You can layer them, and again, if you hit it while it's still wet, you have a new color, because it's these two mixed together. So there is still a lot of variety with these. So let's try them on our other surfaces. Again, this is the Art Creation Sketchbook. Um, let's go for... 
this. These go down um, very smoothly on this paper. They feel nice to use on here. Oh, this one's getting a little dried out. Let's try this. So when you get these when they're wet, they're not going to move a ton, but like you can see, they are moving some and you can use that pigment and move it around and fill it up in like a background if you wanted to. And these come in such a wide variety of colors that really the sky's the limit. That's one of my favorite things about the Tombows. It's just, I think they have a wider range of colors than any of these other markers. So if that's something that you're looking for, um, definitely give these a go. I like this color. So these move around really nicely on these paper. Same as before though, if you work it too much, the paper is gonna sort of pill um, and do weird things. If that doesn't bother you though, that's, you know, it's a fine way to use them in here. And this last one is the most budget friendly out of all of these. And yes, these are Crayola markers. So these ones are the super tips and the reason I picked them was both because of the tip, the shape, and because of the wide variety of colors that these come in. This is not like buying the regular markers that you would get at school for your kids or something like that. They have, this is, so you can see on the top of this, and they might even come in a bigger set than even 100 colors, but they're so inexpensive that you can actually just buy a huge set of these. Are these going to be light fast? I can promise you that they're probably not. <laughs> it is just a student quality brand of marker. Um, some of these colors are missing because these belong to my children, um, but you can just see that there's there's neutrals in here. So if you wanted to try markers, but you weren't ready to try Tombows, these to me are a great alternative to the Tombows. Let's look at this. These neutrals that you can get in here, um, just as with the Tombows, and it does have plenty of saturated colors. And I think most people, when they think of Crayola, they think of saturated colors, but like, look, they basically have a yellow ochre in here, which is kind of wild to me. And like a raw sienna. So let's take a look at these ones. This is what the tip looks like. You're not going to get two tips on these. Again, these are student quality markers, but you have multiple ways you can use them. They have a fine tip if you use them straight up and down, similar to that small end on the Tombow, so you can get really fine marks with them if you'd like. Or you can use it more on the side and scribble and get more of that brush-like mark, um, like with the Tombows. But if you're noticing, like look at these colors, these aren't your typical Crayola colors. And they still move and put down great color like the Tombows. And you can blend them like the Tombows. So let's check them out over here as well. Let me grab, this is a nice green. So 
So these are gonna lift a little bit more than these, I feel like. Um, so again, if that lifting and not leaving much of a mark behind is something that's important to you, these Crayola ones might be a good fit. So yeah, if you really, um, I really can't recommend these <laughs> even more than I already am, but if you are just getting into markers and you want something that's like a Tombow, I highly, 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 highly recommend the Super Tips. Um, these aren't going to be light fast again, but then again, for the most part, I don't believe most of the Tombows are light fast, if any of them are at all. Um, so it's pretty much an even playing field there. And you're still getting the wide variety of colors. And I wanna say this huge box of markers was like 20 bucks or something there about. So yeah, let's go ahead and use it on this Dilutions page. You can layer them right on top of each other, just like with the Tombows too. So you don't need to, you don't need to add water to any of these to activate them. I'm just showing you different things you can do. And same as with the others, the faster you get to them with water, the less of a mark they're gonna leave behind. These Crayola ones seem to lift pretty well though and move around on the page and mix just like the Tombows. So I love my other markers, don't get me wrong, I love all my artist quality markers, but again, if you're maybe not ready to jump into watercolor markers, those are kind of pricey just from the get-go um, because of the manufacturers. Again, artist quality, super high pigment load. Um, but if you're looking for something that you can get some color down and maybe you want an alternative to the Tombows as well, again, I cannot, recommend these enough as an entry-level art supply um, and there's gonna be other videos where I show you some kids supplies that are basically dupes for professional supplies that you can go ahead and use and I think these are just such a great alternative um, to be able to save some money um, one of the things to note on here are these are the washable markers I don't know if all of the super tips are washable. I would suspect that if they're not washable, they're not gonna lift and move around as much as they are here. So if you like being able to move them around, I would probably make sure you get the washable super tip markers. So I hope all of that was helpful and you have a good idea now of which markers might work for you. Like I said before, you don't need to buy huge sets. You don't need to buy, you know, every color in every brand. Buy a couple from each thing that you might like to try and see how they land for you. And again, if you are looking for an entry level marker that is transparent and a little bit water soluble, those Crayola Super Tips are a pretty awesome find. Again, there are links to everything below if you'd like to try any of these supplies. And as always, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.